Hello everyone, it's Chuck, and today we are going to start the Let's Play series of the brand new character of Uncharted Waters Online. Uh, it's a series I've been promising for a while. I don't know how long the series will last. It really does depend on how far everybody wants me to go, but I really want to show the real beginning of this game and a lot of the basics because a lot of people in this game start coming in and then asking a thousand questions to the people in game hoping to get answers and most people are really helpful I mean that's why I played the game because somebody helped me out early on but if you're somebody whom that doesn't get a chance to talk with somebody or doesn't get too much help you tend to struggle early on in this game and there's a lot of unsaid things that you need to know so without further ado let's get started on trying to start a new character and seeing if we can explain a lot of the details as we go alright we're starting a new game well, I'll start a game here, and then I'll log into one of my main characters here, because obviously I want to have that access in case I need to show you guys some things. So Charles Thunder is one of my mains. I have a Chuck Thunder too, hence the channel. But Charles Thunder is my main main. Here's Charles. He's my main guy. He's uh, probably mid-level now. I mean, again, I'm starting to do some of the top-tier stuff, but nowhere near some of the high, high levels that you see around. So we're going to start and create a new character. I normally create characters out of Spain because this is just the general location where a lot of people start. Um, it creates a really um, close, like, cause there's a lot of um, good things to start here that are close by, whereas my first time playing the game I started in Venice and Venice being all the way out here made for some really tough questing because this avenue here in between uh, Italy and Greece is just really a long sailing trip if you don't have the right kind of ship and even when you do it's still you're sailing upwind and downwind so this area here although I wanted to be Italian and I wanted to be Venetian I guess you know maybe that's not really necessarily Italian in every case but I wanted to be and this made my first time a playthrough of the game really difficult so if you're looking for the easiest I would recommend Spain or Portugal because they're really close to a few things next I would recommend France because that's halfway between the two if you're up for a little bit of a tra uh, some traveling otherwise the completely opposite way to start if you're trying to do some a completely different way to, to travel and uh, and to start you can do Netherlands or England I've been wanting to create an English character for a while, but I've never done it. So I don't think I'm going to start that here because it's going to mean I'm going to have to learn a lot of the new basics and change the way I'm going to plan this Let's Play a little bit. So I'm going to start, I think, with either Spain, Portugal, or France. I've never done France before, but I think I'm just going to stick with I think I'm just going to stick with Portugal here or Spain because again I'm familiar with this starting area as much as possible and I'm actually really familiar with the Spanish quest line so let's just do Spanish again it's really uneventful I've done it before but it's got the main capital Seville which is the main capital for pretty much the entire game um, London would be probably one of the next best or, or Lisbon which is Pain uh, uh, Portugal Pain Portugal <laughs> are another those are the three largest starting zones in which that you'll see a lot of people um, hanging out at but but Seville in Spain is the best uh, for the most traffic so we're gonna go with Spain and create a new Spanish character I always make my guys fat I always choose the fat guy um, just because I just I don't know, seem to like that the best I mean this guy ain't fat this guy's thin and lanky I don't like these children <laughs> I don't understand making the child. I like making him fat we're gonna make another fat guy um, Ooh, it looks too serious. But we'll do it. Mr. Serious Fat Guy. And you got uh, several different kinds of hair. So just from me. Can you rotate? Yeah, you can. See the kind of hair you're dealing with. Mullet. Jiminy Glick. Legolas. Uh, Triple H. Uh, anybody from any Final Fantasy ever. Uh, I don't know. Bald dude. I've never known a bald dude. Let's we'll do straight up bald guy. Call him Butterbean. 
complexion. I've never seen anybody that color before in my life. Pink. Let's go with the whitest dude guy. Hair color. Not that this really matters. Oh, it's for his eyebrows. Let's just do black so we can see his eyebrows. And then other. I'm going to give him glasses and eye patch. I gotta stop spinning now, dude. Alright, well, bring it back around. Oh, you got a scar. That's what that is. Yeah! Chin patch. A oh, full beard. I've done the full beard before. That one. But I think I might just do this mustache because it's weird. I wish I could do a combination of the mustache and, like, the glasses. <laughs> Look like a bald Monopoly guy here. Let's just do the mustache. I think it's just funny. Nah, that's all. I'll make it a Venetian character and that's what we'll be here. We'll do this guy. Alright, so there's my character created. Now, you have three different classes to choose from to start. Uh, adventure learner, trade learner, or military learner. From my experience, trade learner is the easiest to level up, uh, especially with a lot of the ways that you can get experience really early in the game. Uh, adventure Learner is the next one because you generally just level up your adventure skill as you just sail around. So it doesn't hurt to be an adventurer, especially since you start off with some of these really key skills like sail handling and body language. They are super important in early game, um, especially when you have very little few uh, skill slots available. So I, I do recommend Adventure Learner. Um, trade Learner is always not bad either. Again, you can get body language. Escape is not really necessary. Uh, accounts is always good and storage is always good and military if you want to get right into battling be my guess but I, I like really having adventure learner because it's just the the you get the skills to start and those skills you you, you kind of need like almost immediately especially surveying and 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 sail handling and before we go on any further I want to recommend something if you don't have it already download GVO Navish. Um, there's a few places you can get this. I got this from a Facebook group I'm on, uh, the fan page of this game uh, on Facebook. That's where I found the link for GVO Navish, but I would always recommend downloading it if you're somebody who's new to the game. Um, I use it, don't use it as much now as I used to, but early game it matters a whole lot. Um, so I'm going to open mine up. You're not going to see it in the background. Oh, this music's going to cut out for a bit, but I'm going to open it up in the background because it's just really convenient to have um, it shows you a map of the entire area of the world and it allows you to see everything and I mean everything cities, l drop zones, uh, bodies of water uh, islands that you don't normally see locations of dangers it's just all listed here and when you're running your survey skill that's when it really shines because then it shows you exactly where you're on the map an arrow where you're pointing and a line in which direction you're headed and you don't know where cities are early on in the game so this will show you where the cities are and you can discover as many cities as possible and you'll see also in game the importance of being in each of these jobs uh, if you're adventuring you want to be in the adventure job if you're trading, you want to be in the trade lane, trade job, and if you're battling, you're going to be in a military job. And the reason why is because you get extra experience, I think some 50% more or 100% more, if you are in one of the courses or one of the jobs for the kind of quest or skill that uh, or, or whatever that you're doing in that moment. So if you're buying and selling, be a trade learner. If you are just traveling and discovering things between, you know, ports, uh, uh, ecology, geography, everything, you should be in that job. Uh, this was something I didn't learn until way later <laughs> into the, my first time playing and I lost a lot of experience for it because if you just go get all the ports while you're a trade learner and you're not an adventure learner getting ports, you're losing out on valuable experience that could have made you a higher level sooner. So very important that you uh, be in the correct job for what it is that you're doing. Um, so that's why I really want to be in the adventure learner early game because I'm going to spend a lot of time traveling and not so much trade learning um, and not so much trading and making money. So I want to be sure that I have the bonuses that I need early on in the game to level up my adventure skill early. Gets you into better ships early and some of these quests are probably the simplest quests to do. So we're going to focus on that. 
But yeah, really get GVO Navish. It's super important. And as soon as I turn on my surveying skill, it'll become active. Now you won't be able to see it, but um, it'll help me navigate, um, and I'll refer to it throughout the game as we play. So we're going to go next. Oh, we can wear hats. Um, very French of these hats. You're going to get an outfit in a second. It's not really going to matter. Um, I'll just pick three things. Sure. Looks like a Christmas tree. All right, next. And what are we going to name our fella here? How about we name him Gonzo? No. Gonzo? Gonzo. Eh, that worked. Didn't say no. Gonzo. Uh, can we name Gonzo something? I want a first and last name. Gonzo. He's Spanish, so Gonzo uh, Rivera. It's just something I'm making it up. I have no idea if that's a real, truly Spanish name. I just like it. So, Gonzo Rivera, here we are. Alright. So, these are the skills we start off with. We start off with the, Eng the, the languages of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and French. So, you don't know English yet. You can learn those skills later. But body language is really the thing that's going to substitute a lot of these later on. Uh, even at some point, you just forget like all your languages except for your native language. All right, so we're gonna go to complete, and we're gonna get started. Start game with this character. Yes. Don't know why they asked me that. Of course, I went through all that trouble to make a character. All right, so we start off the game, and this is everything. It's telling us to talk to the adventure guildmaster. So early on, controls may be a little bit weird, but. 99% of this game can be displayed with just the mouse. You really don't need anything else, but a lot of people do mess around with the different keys and such. I don't bother. Yeah, here they are telling you how to use the mouse. Anywhere you click, your character will go. And anything you, if you right click, you can turn the map and hold it as you turn. But generally, you just click around and that'll walk you everywhere. And then if you want to talk to somebody, like the Adventure GM, you'll see a point hover over him and you'll see a little walking guy. Click him once, it type highlights him, and then click it again, that's when you talk. So double clicking to talk to people. So he's going to talk to me. I'm not going to read every detail that everybody reads here, but reading is important in the game. Obviously a lot of information is shared this way um, for about where to go and where to, and where to be. But early on, I'm just going to walk you through it in the shorthand rather than listen to everybody. Um, Alright, so he gave me a few items. He gave me 50,000 gold and a dagger for defense. Some sail paint, carry on bells, and that's it. So, is this your first time sailing? He says, and you better take this. And he gives me a permit. Now, port permits are super important. This is what allows you to dock your boat in other ports. He's giving me for the first time the port permit for the Spanish area on the east, uh, western coast. So, Western Europe, it's really important to have. Um, all these as much as possible. There are ways of unlocking them all, which we will learn as we go. And then you can see what port burners you have by going to journal and charts. And there they are. So all this is grayed out because I don't have any of it yet. And notice these arrows are also grayed out because I don't have any of those either. So I can go to any of these ports. Malaga, Sueta, Seville, Faro, Sagres, 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 Lisbon, Porto, Viana de do Castello. I want to say we can go to these other ports up here because there's some more up here that I know of. But, anyways, and Madeira. Alright, do we talk to him again? It's always good to double check with things. Even though you're supposedly done talking, it's good to continue to talk to them. Alright. Yep, talking about adjusting our view, paying the camera vertically by dragging up and down. No, I like that too. Alright. Um, do we continue to talk to him? No. Alright, so he has... This guy is where you're going to go to a lot to change your jobs, change, add skills. Here's something I found on the web. Whoa. According to Alexa, Rome, stop it. Last I checked, Greece had a really bad economy, so if you want to go there and spend yes. a lot of money bringing your stuff over, then go ahead. But I think to be safe, you should probably go to Greece with as much cash in your Wow, thanks for telling me about Greece. I know my wife was talking about wanting to go to Greece recently, um, but I'm surprised that came up. A little tip, maybe something in her pocket overheard her talking about Greece, but whatever, that's strange. 
Um, but anyways, I don't know where I was now. So yeah, you're gonna learn all your skills from him. Uh, here you can change jobs. Now obviously we don't have any endorsements to change jobs, but once you learn a job, you can continue to change your jobs back and forth without endorsements. So that's important to know. Acquiring skills, he'll have some skills for me. There's observe or ecological research. I, I guess, I, yeah, you can't get some of these yet until you were certain levels, so they're not available just yet. Um, but once you hit them, then you can start getting them. I, I would recommend if you're going to focus one of these skills real early on, you know, then you can start getting a lot of the stuff, one of these jobs, then start, start focusing it. But right now, I'm going to leave my four slots available for some stuff that I might want to do along the way. Um, and yeah, here's forget skill. This is where you can f forget your languages. Right now, I'm going to leave them uh, just because I don't need the skill slots at the moment, but later on, maybe I'll forget some of them, so I'll have the skill slots available for other skills. Epic Sea Feud, that's a kind of event that you can participate later. The Guild Shop and Change Union and Academy information. You can ignore most of that. The only ones that are important are Acquire, Forget, and Change Job for right now. And I guess the Guild Shop, I guess if you're going to be in a guild at some point. But you're not in a guild and I'm not in a union, so um, not a big deal. Can I join a union? No, not until at least you're a level of 20. So there you go. Not Nothing special after the beginning. So don't think we have any other quests or requests from him for familiarize yourself with the request it might be a good idea to go around the city and take a look at all the facilities and gain some experience he says build up your fame and work towards becoming a full-fledged voyager okay so that's pretty much the start of the game you are now pretty much free to go <clears throat> this is the guy who you get quests from if you want to focus quests but there's some other things to do in the meantime Oh, the beginner's guide, they're going to talk to you about where you can go and participate in it. Um, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Facilities around the city. First, let's talk to the people at the shipyard. So this is where the intro is going to happen. You're going to walk out the building here, double-click the door, and you're going to look to your map, I believe, which will be in the bottom right when it loads. But they're probably going to have me go through some prompts. Again, this game has a lot of reading, and another reason why people don't play this game very often <laughs> you know and like I don't see like a thousand people in it uh, it's mostly because it has a lot of reading and a lot of text hmm Uncharted Waters is not responding let's see what happens ah there we go alright so you could skip all this stuff if you wanted to to teach you all the details um, so by clicking the map on the bottom right of the screen to be able to see the locations alright we're just gonna alright we skip all that so, clicking on the bottom right hand map here brings up the map. And then you can see everything in here is labeled by a picture. You can hover over and see where it is. And if you click any of these things, your character will auto path right to it. So, I don't know where we need to go at the moment, um, but wherever we end up going, it'll teleport, teleport us there if it's the port. Otherwise, it'll make you walk to it. So, I teleported to the nearest port, which was a little anchor on the picture. And here's the port guy. Click him, and he'll teach me something about it. And you can ask him all these questions and say, I understand. You don't need to tell me things. I got you. Alright. We're going to tra train everybody else on that stuff later. Alright. And then we're going to go to the next thing. Right to the left of this was the market keeper. That's why there's a lot of people here. This is where people like to sell goods from far away. They go travel. They come back and they sit here in these little bazaars and you can buy the stuff from them. Good. We're done talking to you. Peddler. You got something to say too? No. All right. And honestly, as we go and we talk to more groups of people or more people individually, we will um, get more of those prompts. I'm going to go to the tavern. So I, I clicked here on the bottom map. I'm going to click tavern. It'll auto path me to the tavern. Close that. And the tavern's straight across the way. The reason we're going to the tavern is because there's a lot of things in here I could show you. The tavern is really important because the tavern is going to be the place that you need to fill up your vigor. Um, your vigor is the purple bar up here at the top. This is what you use. You use your vigor to do skills. It's kind of like mana and like other games. Um, the green bar are the sailors that are on your ship currently. The light green portion is the required number of sailors and the dark green portion is the remaining number of your sailors. And then the red bar is the durability of your ship. Simple as that. So anyways, the barkeep probably Nope, doesn't have anything to say. So the barkeep has you ordering food. That'll refill your vigor. And 
you could treat your sailors, which will ref will reduce this other bar. I don't know if you can see it underneath the sailors, but it's your fatigue bar. Buy drinks for your sailors from time to time, and their uh, fatigue will drop. Um, we're going to come back here to buy aids at some point. Aids are assistance uh, in the game. There are other things here like hunting for things, clues, relics, and treasures. I've never done any of these things myself, but there's always a guide on the internet somewhere. IV Row is a great place to go to learn a lot of this information that I'm not going to talk about here, um, but I'll, I'll mention it when it's important. Rosario is a bar lady. She's a place where you can drink with her. I'll go buy her a drink. Why not? And it just says, I really my level with Rosario, my friendship level, but really she's a place where you can uh, hand in quests. Now, obviously if you have a quest here in this city, you would just go to the uh, mediator in the correct uh, guild, but you could be in another major city and talk to the barkeep and the barkeep, or not the barkeep, Rosario or whoever the other bar barmaid is, and they will uh, hand in your quest for you. Um, these merchants, aged travelers, and seafarers and such are people where you can employ more uh, sailors for your ship if you need more. I don't need any more, so, you know, that's just who you can talk to. You can also do that at the port. Now, let's get right to the meat uh, of the game here. That's basically the general gist. There's a lot of things around this area where you can go to and explore, and as we go to them, I will uh, explain them, such as the bank, the company office, your the quarters, where that's your doorkeeper over here, um, the item shops. We'll, we'll figure that all out. So anyways, now there's a lot of tabs up here. Up here you have your character tab, your ship tab, your quests and other things that you're for currently working on tab, your uh, I don't know what to call this, just like your general information, uh, things that you've done in the game already, uh, tracking your historical events, your discoveries, missions that you're doing slowly over time, and then this, so that's really not that important of a tab, we'll refer to it a few times. Here's your social tab, and this is your settings tab. Um, in here you can make a lot of changes if you want to, to your picture, your video, your audio, all that stuff. All right. So, anyways, character information most important. Let me. This is kind of a heavy loaded tab, so let's take a look. We started off with adventure level one. It's 40 experience points to our next level, and next to that is fame. Fame obviously is something you do as you become more notor, uh, build more notoriety doing what you're doing. You'll get fame for doing all sorts of adventure things, all sorts of trade things, and all sorts of battle things. Right now, we are an adventure learner. We are a voyager. We have no companies. So that's what this is. This is the current job we're in. This is the company we're in. We're not in any. We are not in um, any right now, but we can join. We are a Voyager. It's the kind of rank that we have with the uh, the nobility here, like you know, the king and queen or whoever it is that is in your major city. And no titles. So you earn titles as you go and play the game. Here is your formality. This allows you to look nice and be able to socially talk with people of higher formal uh, ratings. Disguise, this is what you're going to need to get into certain cities in which that you do not belong, so you might need to wear clothing in which that makes you look like you fit in. Your attack power, this is important for battling, and your defense power, again, also important for battling. Then your assets are listed here, how much gold you have, how much is in your bank, that's in your deposit, Roman coins, which is another kind of currency that you will get throughout the game, and the insurance level, meaning the kind of compensation you'll get in case you are sunk or, or die at sea and you want your money back that you will re get refunded 43,000 for grade one and you can keep on buying more and more insurance at the bank so that's the general information on this tab skills tab again we talked about some of these skills this is where you have the ones that we started for with but there are different kinds of skills there's adventure skills trade skills and battle skills and there's a lot of skills to learn here, so we're going to have to talk about these when we start going through the process of what skills we're going to need in order to do certain quests and what sort of path we want to take. Um, so right now, we're just going to go with the skills that we do have. We're not going to get any new ones unless we need them at the moment. I might stop into the trade one and pick up some trade ones just because, like, some basic ones would be cooking, some basic ones would be caution, that's really important too to trade one battle maybe I'll pick up something basic well, why don't we go do that real quick so we came out of the adventure guild before and we just ignored some of the skills because we weren't able to get them but let's go to the merchant guild which is the little barrel in the map this merchant guild will give us some of, some of the skills I think we're gonna need hopefully uh, for an early start we have four skill slots to fill so 
Let's see if we can fill it with something that'll come in handy for us early on. Okay, good. They're going to talk to us about merchants. Let's just skip that. <clears throat> Soft potato, get out of my way and give me your powers. Okay. All right, so here we can acquire our skills from the merchant guy. Now, he has three. And, you know, there we go. We're seeing the reason that we can't get these. We can't get storage, caution, or cooking because we aren't the proper trade level. So we will get a trade level, like, almost instantly if we do something, like buy and sell something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something some people would say is cheating. And I don't think it is cheating. But some people would say it is. And that is to, I mean, I don't have a lot of gold, so early on this is not too uh, capable. But I'm going to go to this guy who's selling nut and nutmeg and mace, which is a kind of spice. Oh, never mind, he's not selling that. He's selling sandalwood and mulberry. Is anyone selling spices? Usually there's somebody here selling spices. East Asia, soury. He's not saying what he's smelling. He's a, a selling, not smelling. Tobacco and lumber. All right, you know what? Tobacco is usually pretty good. It's a spice, or not a spice. It is a um, luxury good from the Caribbean, so we will get two of these. That's all I can afford. And still have some money. I don't know if this is going to be enough to level us up, but we're going to then go to the market keeper after I bought it. Oh, I know. Account skills. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I'm fine. Leave me alone. Thank you. And I will go to sell. And then from sell, I will sell the tobacco for a profit. Now, I'm not making a profit because I bought it for so much, but they're going to give me 9000 uh, and they know that the general purchase price is this much, so that's the sell price. That's like the general profit. But I'm going to make 10000 out of this. I could haggle, but I don't have uh, any account skill yet, so that's what he was trying to tell me. Um, so that's what I'm going to get. Hit OK. And we leveled up. Now we're already at trade level 2. It's a little quick bonus. If you guys are looking to level up your trade very quickly, this is the way to do it. You just got to have the money to buy any of these goods that these people have and sell. Now, I did it just so that I could get the skill needed. Actually, yeah, I kind of need the skills now. Let's go get the skills now. Um, so I have the level necessary and get some of these other trade skills that I think are very important. Uh, battle skills you can almost hold off on completely, unless if you really want to focus battle early. But I'm talking about getting started early, getting better ships early, getting somewhere early on in the game. All these require level 2, but I need cooking. Oh, so never mind. I still can't buy any skills. Wonderful. And don't forget, you need money for this too, so i got to make sure I have enough. If I don't, I'm going to have to do some real trading in the meantime. So, this is the general gist of the game. We haven't even gotten to the sailing part yet, and that's the fun part, if you ask me. Actually, the buying and selling is the fun part to me, if you ask me. But, <clears throat> we're going to go and see if we can level up one more time. If we go to the character information sheet, it'll tell us we need 38 more experience, so it's really easy to get. I'm just going to try to find something cheap again. Tobacco is always good. Let's buy another two tobacco. Sell at the market keeper again. Now you could sell a stack of two. You could also click sell as unit and click how many you want to sell. I just like to set as sell as all. And there we are, level 3. So now we have a level 3. Oh, very close to completing a mission of reaching total level 5. So this is what I mean by these missions. Um, a challenge mission. Now that it's highlighted, you'll see that that means I completed one of the tasks, or I'm close to completing one of the tasks on the mission list. Some of them are reaching level 5, getting 2,000 total fame, 15 skills, and so on. You get different items for them, and they'll be very important as we play the game. Because um, they give you some really useful items early on. So... Let us move on back to the adventure. So I really do suggest getting some of these skills early on. I think cooking might be one of the more important skills because it is something you could profit on um, doing, and it's something you can also use early on in the game, which is food. See, I've already reduced my vigor to uh, keep your vigor up. So I'm going to get cooking first. Now that we have cooking, I'm going to get storage. Storage helps us... Uh, 
convert a fish to a tradable item that we catch when we're out at sea. And caution. This is going to protect us from uh, other ships out there as we sail. Those are the most important skills, I think, early on in the game right now. Um, I don't have abilities to use much of the stuff yet. Oh, either. That's another thing, because I don't have many items to use. You can use recipe books to cook with and, and do other crafting mechanisms too so that's that's partly why it is imperative to get one of these skills because you need to have start early on building your uh, skills uh, network what did I click here oops your skill network so like cooking is a level one skill at the moment but as you do it you build proficiency and then as soon as you hit 200 proficiency you move to rank two and so on and you can make better and better foods that restore your vigor so you'll see that some people are selling foods and stuff and they're very helpful but they're expensive and early on in the game you just don't have that ability so we are going to while we still have some uh, money quickly top off on our actually we don't need to we're gonna go right to the port and I'm gonna take you to the starting area of the game As soon as the port guide loads, click the port guide. Now, on this tab, you'll see there's several things. There's race information. You can participate in a race and get a reward for participating. Tow requests are an item that you can use to auto-sail yourself from one place to the other. Um, they cost 30000 and you, you can buy these once a day to buy somewhere between 10 and 12 tow permits to get yourself to auto-sail between places. So that's kind of helpful um, if you're somebody like me who likes to you know set your sail and walk away from the game for a little bit but early on in the game you're gonna have to do a lot of the sailing on your own liner informations are direct tow lines again but just a little bit faster like instant these will still have to sail but they'll auto sail it and then other things not important at the moment but other levels stuff uh, stuff for higher levels to do um, such as uh, the commercial battle sea region information again I don't know anything about this but for early games Right now, you're just going to go to your port. And while at port, you'll see our ship. Oh, I know. Mr. Official is going to get permission to sail. Sorry, but the ship is scheduled to depart before it's taking no longer to expect to unloading. La, 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 la. What he's on is. Sure. Sometimes anything you pick will be fine. You know, to the responses to these guys. <clears throat> It'll change the way the story is a little bit, but it won't change exactly how the thing ends. So this is all just talk between some NPC characters. So he's basically saying I should go to Lisbon, the Adventure Guild in Lisbon. basically talking about getting quests from adventure guilds and such it's generally what they're trying to talk to you to tell you to go do you don't have to listen all right so here you have the set sail tab the provisions tab which is what you're going to need while you're sailing so that you don't starve to death or die of dehydration on your boat you get more sailors you can teleport yourself back to the city using one of these options here the harbor the square or the commercial district or the company district that just pops you back in the city somewhere in here based at one of these ports and then again liner information campaign transports and uh, Ganador transports they take you to other places in the game for higher area so here we're going to check our provisions we have 20 days worth of provisions because we have 10 water and 10 food so that's more than enough this early on in the game we don't need anything else but you can add one or more five or more ten or more or you can just fill the whole lot and be like Top me off. It's up to you. Uh, I'm just going to go with 20 days. It's more than I need, and I'm not going to be battling or anything of that nature right yet. And there's a little boat. It's a barca. Tiny little barca. Go to ship information tab here. There's our boat. It's got 109 vertical sail and 10 horizontal sail. These sails will tell us how fast we could sail in certain kinds of winds. And you got winds to your tail, then horizontal sails will push you faster. When you got winds coming in from the nose, then you will have a faster sailing trip going against the wind. 
Uh, and then obviously these other things make sense here. You got row power, which this is not a rowing ship. Turn speed, how quickly you can turn. Wave resistance. Oceans have different levels of wave sizes, and the wave resistance two means I can handle a wave size of two. Uh, any larger waves that are larger than my ship, I run the risk of, you know, getting washed away. And um, armor for battle reasons. Um, it says I have one of six improvements. Again, I don't know what's the improvement here, um, but supposedly I have some improvements. You can do some improved performance here with some ship builders later on that can increase the stuff. But early on, don't worry about any of this. You're going to be moving in and out of ships so quickly. Um, this here is your proficiency for sailing. As you sail the ship, you get better at sailing the ship. Your crew gets more uh, appropriate with their understanding of the ship, so you can sail faster once you hit a... Uh, level of 40 on this and that happens over time you could also name the ship um, you could also see what other ships you have in your inventory I think you can have a maximum number of five ships in your inventory that you could swap in and out of and then you have ship parts things that you could attach to your ship to make you sail faster like better sails um, figureheads uh, some stuff that you put on your sails itself especially equipment and armor plating as well as cannons early on none of this matters so we are all set to sail I'm gonna hit set sail um, do I have, I'm just curious, if I hit auto navigation, do I have any tow permits? No, I have zero, so I cannot sail to anything. Plus, I haven't discovered any ports. That would make a reason why I can't go to the ports, because I don't know where they are yet. So, we're just going to hit set sail, and we're going to immediately start sailing to the nearest city. Um, they're going to show you how to use this. I, honestly, none of this matters. It used to matter, but it doesn't anymore. Um, so, if you want to start sailing, just like you would on the boat, just click on a direction and you'll start sailing and it automatically does all this you don't need to touch any of this you used to have to like actually like pitch your sails in the right direction and everything not anymore so we're gonna start heading west because I know that Lisbon is around the corner already um, and here's a good chance to activate our skills surveying skill and caution caution I always do because it helps me avoid battles with other ships and Early on, you really don't have the ability to fight. And these little small barkas are small, but they're the same size as you, and there's a good chance you lose. The other thing I will use is surveying. Surveying opens up this other map that allows me to see the map again, but without turning it, so you can see the direction you're going. And it'll also put little white dots where there are cities that you could hover over and see. Um, so there are no cities along this coastline west of Seville until we get to the first one here, which I'm starting to see on the distance called Faro. Um, if I'm, if I look at my GVO Navish, it's now showing me uh, my little purple line showing the direction I'm going, and it's telling me Pharaoh's coming next. So that's the first thing I'm seeing uh, on my right coming up. And as you sail, you sail in and out of seas, so it does that loading screen every t so often. Uh, but right now, we're just sailing to Pharaoh. I want to get to Pharaoh because I want to discover Pharaoh. Every time you make a discovery of a new city, you get what is called a discovery card, which you will see on your discoveries tab. And ports are very important um, because obviously you need to go to them to buy and sell goods and to do complete quests. But as you rep get them, they'll be under they will be unreported, and you will want to report them to the proper person. This is another thing that nobody taught me. I'm going to report them to the proper person based off of where the closest person is to me. When I report them to that person, you'll get more adventure experience for having reported it to the right person, as well as also getting a uh, quest mediation permit, which is basically a re-roll on quests that the mediators give you. So the mediator will give you like six to seven quests, sometimes less and you don't like any of the quest options so you use a quest mediation permit to refresh the, the quest li list and some people um, uh, really uh, blow through those quickly so it's good to save up on them yourself because you may need them so I double click the city click once to highlight it again second time to go in now we're in the port of the city and we're going to go in by clicking the harbor here. Notice there's other options because the harbor is the first and the only option to enter this small town. It's not a big city like Seville. And there we go, we discovered Faro. And now our adventure level is 2. So discovering our first town has caused us to reach our first milestone. Uh, 
and that's generally what you're going to do the entire game. And there's a lot of things here that you can walk into it's very similar to the other game, uh, other uh, locations. You got market keepers, shopkeepers. Uh, there's your bank. It's just smaller city officials, port officials. It's all here. Oh, we already hit our challenge mission of hitting level five. So, reach total level five. Challenge mission tab always has nice rewards. Now the papaya starter pack for level five is actually really useful. So we're going to go and obtain this reward. Boom. I took me a long time to discover these rewards. Once I discovered them, I was like, whoa, look at all this fun stuff I just got. So here we are with a papaya starter pack. Now, if you see this little symbol in the corner that has like a recycling symbol with a red line through it, it means you can't trade it to anybody. It's solely yours. It's bound to this character. So we're going to click it. And so I first went to this here, which says use item. Um, if you can't use items by going to the inventory, like that's not how you use them. You click use item here. It opens up the usable items. I have sale paint, which I'll use later, and the papaya starter pack, which I just got. And click OK, and this is what's in the pack. I haven't opened it yet, but I'm just seeing what's in it. It is iron plating, cannons, a dragon figurehead, a longsword, a candle that has an effect, wind king's pendants, sea god pendants, and some cheese, or sorry, crepes, that looks like cheese, fondant crepes, perception, observe uh, skill books, and master craftsman's carpentry tools. So we're going to hit OK. Are we sure we want to obtain these items? Yes. Make sure you have the inventory space. I have 20 out of 50 slots, so we're going to say yes. And boom, I got all the items. Now when I click use item, I'm going to have a lot more slots open in front of me here. It's just updating me all the things that I just, I just obtained. It's going to list them all one at a time. So, are we done yet? Jeez. So, fondant crepes are what are going to restore my vigor while I'm out at sea. Having food on you is super important when you're sailing because you need to restore your vigor, especially early on in the game. You only have 55 vigor, and food. this food restores 40 vigor at a time. So this is a good deal while you're out there. You use one, and boom, your vigor goes full bar almost, essentially. Um... So yeah, I'm not uh, I'm I'm not gonna use that now because I'm in a city and I can go to a tavern. But if you're out at sea, you should use those when your vigor is low. Um, another thing to note here is that uh, this weekend specifically, it is a 100% increase, I believe, in skill. Hence, in the chat tab down here, you see that I have gained 16 adventure experience, which is a 100% bonus. So normally I'd only get 8% experience. I got 100% uh, percent extra, so I got 16. So right now we're in a 100% bonus for the weekend. I think it's like every two weeks we have a 100% bonus. So this is a good time to really show you how to move quickly through the game This uh, with this little story that I'm doing because I'm getting double the XP. Anyway, so we are now at Vigor 5. I really want to have some more Vigor because using those skills that I did while I sailed over here, spent all my Vigor. So we're going to go to the barkeep, and we're going to order some food. And the way to order food here is you have to pick a drink and a food. So you see that they have higher and lower restore rates. I just go with rum because it's right there. And I pick the highest food rate, which is chicken paella. Now, I don't have to choose chicken paella. I could choose croquette, and that also fills me up, and it's a little bit cheaper. So maybe early on, saving 20 ducats is a good deal. So we'll go ahead and do this. It restores me to full. And when you do talk to the barkeep, he tells you some things that are useful. Like he says, I can sell hazelnuts here for 576 ducats in town. So if I buy hazelnuts in another town where they're like maybe 100, then I can make a 400 ducat profit. Which sounds like a lot, but in this game, billions of ducats is a real profit. So anyways, we're here. I'm going to show you some things that we could do. We're going to look at the shopkeeper real quick and buy. See if this person has anything for us to use. Nothing that I can see here. Um, no, nothing that I want. Um, but these are the uh, recipe books I was talking about. That depending on what skills you're in, you can use them to uh, build or make things that you need for the game. Uh, I'm going to look for the cooking book because I know cooking very well, and the cooking books that I need are going to help me uh, make do with what I have a lot uh, easier. Uh, and, and b keep on replenishing my vigor throughout the game. So anyway, so the uh, market keeper here sells something different from the other place. Um, he sells pigs, eggs, parsley, poultry, and fish. So mostly food items. Um, pigs are going to be very important later. So is chicken, and so is fish. So right now, 
just to show you that we can buy and sell things from here too and go to other cities. It doesn't hurt to buy, even though you're an adventurer and you still want to participate in trade, participate in trade, be my guest. It never hurts. Buying something and selling in another town and making a profit is always a good thing if you can afford the space in their uh, thing to do so. So I'm going to buy some fish because I know fish sell well in Seville. They typically do. So I'm going to buy some fish and keep it on me. I, I don't have a lot of cargo space so I can't buy too much stuff. It's almost filled me up completely. But we're going to buy some fish. Just because I think later on we're going to stop in some place and we're going to sell uh, the fish where we could make a profit. So we're going to go back to the port official. We're going to go back to port. We're going to make sure that we have enough provisions to make it to the next city. We used one of each so I think we're okay to make it to the next town over. I'm going to go to the next major area that I want to go to which is a place called Sagers. Ugh, I keep skipping these. Sagers is the place where you go to quote unquote school. Notice I'm putting on my skills automatically every time I get in the boat. There's another skill I want to get called Frugality. Frugality will uh, lessen how much provisions you use while you sail. So it like pretty much doubles your length that you can spend out at sea. So once I get that one, I'm good. But anyways, Sagers is school. This is where you're going to learn the process of questing and getting out there and getting experience, getting ships, and graduating from school. Um, there are three schools, adventure school, trade school, and military school, obviously for each of the three kinds of jobs. So we are going to enroll in all three schools today, or maybe just one school, I don't know if we have to enroll in all three, but we're going to enroll in school. So here it is, Sagers is the next town over from Pharaoh, and we're in. Go to the harbor, we'll get the discovery. Jeez, a lot of things happening. So as you go to places, you're going to get folklore, little fuzzy folklore pictures. All right, I understand what Sagers is. All right, we have obtained the, st the title student. So now in our title tab, we can change it from Voyager to student, which is important to change to. So just so you saw that, I went to character tab, character information, change title, title to student. And the reason why I want to change the title student because there is clothing that you could wear only from here if you have the correct title. So I'm just going to click on the shopkeeper here see if he has any sh recipe books for me. They tend to, especially the starter towns. Yep, so he's got Livestock pe uh, Secrets Pigs and Simple Secrets. So I'm going to buy both these books if I can afford it, which I can't. <laughs> so let's do pigs first. I can't even afford that. Okay, that's a problem. So, you know what? I probably should never have bought the fish. And the fish, because this place sells fish, I don't have enough profit. That's wonderful. Okay. Well, if I sell it, what kind of money will I get back? Just enough to buy the pig book. Alright, you know what? We're not, we'll have to come back here and buy the pig book. Early on, money is super important. And it doesn't hurt to ask for a donation from somebody. Anyways. So, see this outfit this guy's wearing here? He's wearing a school uniform. And you get your school uniform from, uh, I think, when you join the schools. So we're going to join the schools here. So back here we see the merchant course instructor, the adventure course instructor, and the maritime course instructor. It's back over here. I don't know what a mercenary mediator is either. But anyways, so since we're already adventure, we're going to click on adventure. And I'm going to register for class because I'm not part of class yet. So we're going to class register. And then here's everybody that's in the class. There's th three classes. Class 2, class 3. I'm just going to go with class 1, obviously. A lot of people with different varying levels. I'm going to join this class. Yes, I will join school chat. And there we are. We are now in class. We are now in school. Do I need to join the classes for the maritime too? No, I'm now in class regardless. Okay, so joining class gets you in class regardless. So here we go. We're going to click the adventure course instructor, and we're going to take a quest. He has one quest available for us, and we need a skill level of search one, which it's white because we do. And he wants us to go uh, use our search skill or observation skill, or we could use any of the items that give us these skills. And... We are going to talk to the scholar in Lisbon. That's what the quest says. So we'll say, okay, we accept the quest. And I now have a quest. 
don't think he has any other quests that we could take, so we just take the one. You could double up and get quests from other instructors if you wanted to, but I suggest focusing on one guy at a time and just get as many quests from him as you can until you can finish the exam quests that are needed for um, continuing to uh, get better and better stuff. So, I don't know how to get my... Uh, my uh, clothing. That's a question I do not know. Ah, he's got it. Okay. So here's the uniform. Buy the uniform for him for 500 and 100. 1,000, I mean. So we're going to buy it from him and equip it. So I hit buy and equip. And they give us disguise and defense power, whereas these don't really give us anything. They give us one defense power. So this is our new outfit for the time being. Alright. Let's hit OK. And we are set. Which, actually, now that I realized, I don't think I have something in my hand equipped. So, we'll just equip the sword. It's not a big deal. It doesn't need to be. And you know what? Even furthermore, just so it's not important, I'm going to sell this stuff, too. Because <laughs> there's no need for it. Sell the hat and the clothes. i got, what, 100 Gutukats back? Whatever. This is going to be our new clothing for the time being. And it gives us the best benefits, and it has high durability. It lasts a while. So this is just the most important. Anyway, so I still have some vigor left. I don't need to stock up on any more of that. We're going to go to the port again, and we're going to go to Lisbon now. Uh, if you have the GVO Namish, you'll see that Lisbon is the next city directly next to this one. Uh, so the north of Sagers. So I'm going to set sail. And there it is. You can already see it kind of right next door ship's getting in my way. There we go. So we're going to start heading there. Again, I'm going to use my skills of caution and surveying. Because as I use these, and I have, and I use them more often, surveying is gaining some proficiency. Sail handling is one that's, you know, been going on all, all along. And body language hasn't been used yet. Cooking hasn't been used yet. Search hasn't been used yet. But anything which that I'm using is getting used. I mean, is getting some skill. Um, proficiency and I want to get as much skill proficiency as I can uh, early on because especially in these times of frames where I have um, uh, all the time in the world especially with these 100 percent bonus weekends to get my proficiency and skills and experience up okay click on the next city and we're in so again, I can go to any of these places. I'm just going to go, he said to go to the Scholar, so I'm just going to hit the square. It's pretty relatively centered in the whole city. And it's going to pop me in here. I just made another discovery. Click on the map, and the Scholar is located at the Archives. It's a place where you'll go to speak to somebody here. So I click that, and we will walk directly to it. A little cheat, cheat and secret, if you want to like get someplace faster, click the nearest port to it first, teleport to it, and once you're there, then open up the map and click the thing that you want to go to because it's a little bit faster getting there than just walking. In most cases. Okay, we're going to have the archives. Let's click to go inside. And the scholar is directly in front of us. Someone's already talking to him. Double click him. And boom, it pops up with a little text box telling us that we are uh, updating our quest information. So we'll click him again just to make sure we have something else. Yep double check always double click the guy more than once um, and look at that you can he's telling us some of the stuff that we can get uh, long ago a scholar from this town died donated to the church in Seville when you go inside the church you can use the observe skill uh, or the item perception or artisan from starter pack level 5 which we did get some of those the exact location of the discovery is a shining golden column you may need to use search or dowsing rod multiple times the location and make the discovery so it says it's in the church in Seville, so that's where we're headed back to. Um, so that's where we'll go. So the scholar doesn't have anything else to say to us in those text box, but just another things that he has here. He has, allows us to browse his books, to learn information, and gain some skill, college information when we get to college, and then skill bestowment and disposing of ornaments. Nothing important right now. We will use him for later for college. All right, so we are done here. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can sell anything here at the Market Keeper. I mean, I have fish, but if the fish themselves are not high enough profit here, let's see. I can make a profit. How much profit? 
a decent amount of profit. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Just because. You can also click market rates to see what nearby cities are selling them for. But since we don't have a high enough account skill, we can't see that. So right now, we're just going to sell it to make a profit. We have 15000 I can also buy more from him here. I know Ham sells well in Pharaoh. Um, I, I could buy stuff here. But right now, early on in the game, I'm not trying to show you guys trade too much. I just want to show you that that's how you buy and sell. Take it to another city, buy and sell another thing. Fish is always good to bring to Seville, though. Like, I've never had a problem with that. It's kind of like a bonus, no matter what. All right. So, we are going to go back to the port guide. We are going to teleport. We are going to make sure we have provisions set. For 16 days, we're okay. We're going to set sail. Skip this again. And we are going to start sailing. Ugh, being such a small ship kind of stinks. Oh, you can zoom in and out of your character too with the mouse wheel. If you have trouble being able to navigate. Alright, we're going to use our caution and our surveying skill. Notice our vigor is getting low here. Now, if you want to know where to get skills from, you go to your skill tab and you click on the, the one of the other three tabs here. Like, I could really use Frugality, and I know Frugality is a trade skill, I believe. Maybe not. Where is Frugality? Maybe not. Adventure. Jeez, I recognize it by the picture, but I don't see it. Well, Frugality, I've got to find. But once you find it, there it is. You click it and say, I want it. So you click location and it'll tell you where you can get it. Ah, oh, I was just in Lisbon. I could have picked it up. So maybe we'll do that. Turn around. Oops, I just started sailing out to sea randomly. But yes, it tells you where to get the skill. And it said it was in Lisbon at the Merchant GM. So we're going to go pick that up because that's going to make sailing for us a little bit easier in that we will not need to refill our uh, food as often. And I feel like early game, that could be a money saver. So getting getting familiar with the skills and what they do early on is like kind of important and asking people what skills do and how to rank them up and how to make them better is kind of important. Like notice how these skills are going away on the little side here. Because they're so low low rank, they stop being effective after a short period of time. S the surveying has already ended and I have no more frugality, I mean no more vigor in order to uh increase it or to keep it going so it just stopped and sooner or later caution will stop once its use has ended so it's important that you level up these skills so they'll last longer let's go back to Lisbon and while we're here we're going to top off under vigor too something I should have thought of before we left all right so we click someplace oh, they're talking us about figuring food so let's go right to the merchant GM right across the way have some money. Hopefully, the skill doesn't cost too much. It can cost anywhere between like a few hundred to a few thousand, and sometimes even a couple thousand. So, merchant GM, acquire skill, frugality. Nice. I might even grab sociability while I'm here. It allows you to talk to people with higher positions a little earlier on in the game. So, frugality, and I'll take sociability. All right. So now frugality is a new skill we can use, which is good, but at the same time it means we're going to use our vigor faster, and that's going to be another drain on our vigor, so we definitely want to have more vigor food with us uh, as we start to use it faster. So we'll go to the tavern real fast and top off on our vigor. Now, because I know the language of Portuguese, being in Lisbon is not a problem. I can talk and communicate with anybody here, but if I didn't have enough... Uh, I didn't have the language, then I'd be using body language, and there's a chance of failure to communicate over that. So, 
Alright, so we'll go ahead and just take this first food. Oh, talking with him gave us a uh, potential uh, thing to talk about with folklore. Alright. So, oh, we got challenge missions completed again already? No, but we're getting close. We're almost going to hit level 10 starter pack. Now, when it says level 10, it's not like I'm level 10 in any of the particular skills. I'm level 10 total. So right now I'm a level 6 total because I've got 3 and 3 adding up to 6. So once I hit level 10 total, then I'll get the next starter pack. Anyway, so let's go to the next city again. I'm almost out of money, so maybe what we'll do is we'll stop in uh, Faro and buy some more fish. And sell. So we'll use frugality this time, caution, and surveying. Now, again, surveying is important because you know where you're going when you're playing the game. But if you're somebody like myself who's got a lot of practice sailing in places and you're using auto sailing, there's really no reason to use surveying other than just to continue to leveling it up so it lasts longer when you do need it. I like to use it when I'm free sailing. Right now I'm free sailing. So it makes sense to have it. Um, you know, in other cases, you don't need to use it when it's not important. But in early on, when you're sailing manually, constantly changing direction, you know, it's good to have it. And, and my general feeling is if you're looking for ports in this game and you just want to do a bunch of port discoveries, just stay close to the to the shore and follow it until you find the next city and keep going until you find the next city and keep going until you find the next city. And you'll keep on getting these port discoveries, which I'm going to show you how to do a port discovery um, uh, submission in a second here. I'm going to go to Faro real quick and buy some fish so I can sell that in, in Seville while I'm there. Stock up. You can also see your food and water intake up here, your lumber and your munitions up at the top over by this little uh, wheel here. It tells you how many days you've been at sea, you've been at sea for one day, how many ducats I have, your name, all that. So keep an eye on that. Do not want to run out of food while you're at sea. All right, so we'll go back to the harbor here. We're going to go to the market and buy some fish. I need to make some money. So I'll buy all the fish that I can buy. Probably could buy other things, but I don't have a lot of cargo space. And we're just gonna get back on the road, or oh, should say on the sea, go to Seville and sell. Still have plenty of days left on my food. Ah, so, so notice this guy has red lettering. That is a pirate. The more uh, PvP that a person participates in, at, or blows up city, uh, blows up like good guys, I should say, they're going to gain some bad notoriety, and that notoriety is going to change their letters or their names to different colors. And red means that they're a pirate, and that they will and can attack you at the open seas when you're in an area that's no longer safe, and they can take your money. I mean, no one's going to bother me because I'm so small and I'm so useless and I don't have any money to steal. But that, you know, that sort of situation is going to be scary later on when you have like several million Ducats on you and you get attacked and they take it all from you. I've had people, though, that are nice pirates attack me, take my money, and then give back to me like double my money and say thank you for letting me do this because they are doing it for, you know, quests or they're doing it for some purpose. Um, so they do it for a reason but they don't want to like ruin your time. So PvP in this game, although it can happen, is not as bad as say like something like World of Warcraft where you get ganked in the middle of nowhere and you keep on getting ganked and you can't play the game. That's not what happens here. All right, so we're getting close. We just ran out of vigor. I could use uh, food. Uh, I would just go to use item and I would use fondant, but I won't. And now that we are close to Seville, we'll pop into Seville. Pfft, 
they're going to ask you a bunch of questions as you play. Oh, look, he gave me some lifesavers. These are used to, if you ever get sunk and you have no sailors left on your ship, you use them to save some of your sailors so that you can at least, you know, limp your way back to sit, uh, to a city. All right, so we're going to go to the commercial district, which is right next to the market keeper. What? I just discovered Seville? That seems like something that shouldn't happen <laughs> when you started in Seville, but okay. Um, anyways, we just got a discovery, so we'll go ahead and sell our fish. See, give us a profit. Good to have. Sometimes you can have items that, like, you know, benefit you when you're selling, so that's why they put that there. So we'll just sell that. We made some profit. Um, and they said that we need to uh, go talk to the church. So we're going to go to the church next. I click this. Requested go to the church. Go to the columns next to the church and use my observe skill. Now, I don't have this, this skill observe but I do have the perception of artisan item which allows me to use that to observe something so we are going to go into the church and he said the golden pillar I don't know where that is but we're just going to try it here and see what happens a little thing showing you that you're observing no nothing how about behind here now, I'm just kind of like putzing around trying to see if it works, but if you really are confused, you can go back to your quest tab and read it. It says, the first edition of the travels, it should be the walls on the right side of the book stand, so you would be able to find it with a search skill, or use the observation skill, or an item that has it. You should be able to find the location which it's stored in. Okay, so, said church. A wall near the side. So how about this one? It's sparkling. So yeah, it seems to be something around here. So that means I need to use a skill. Oh, I'm out of vigor. No wonder why I can't search. So observe just helps you find it. I think observe actually discovers it. So that's a little detail that, you know, might need to be ironed out. So I'm not going to walk all the way to the um, tavern, so we're going to use this just to get my vigor back up, and then we're going to try the search skill. Boom. Got a discovery. Travels of Marco Polo discovered. My adventure went up. I got a new discovery card. Quest completed. So there you go little something you learned there. Observe helps you find where something is, but doesn't necessarily um, discover the item for you or discover what you're looking for. Search will. Um, there are other ways to search in the game besides search. Um, there are other um, uh, skills that also do something similar. Alright, so now that we've finished the quest, we're going to go back to Sager's to submit the quest. But, there is something I want to show you about how to do this in case you don't want to go to Sager's. Um, you can go to the tavern instead. And remember I mentioned Rosario? Rosario is usually a person you could submit quests to. Now I don't know if I have high enough friendship with Rosario yet, but I should be able to submit. Normally in your home city, the first, the, the kind of tavern uh, woman or, or barkeeper assistant will help you uh, early on. So we'll drink with her. Say okay. Hmm. Nothing. So, that would mean I would need to give her something in order to help her uh, like me. So we're going to give her a sword. Oh, she doesn't want it. Okay. So, normally you give her clothing, and she'll be able to do it. Let me see if I can do that. Clothing usually makes her happy. Um, I just don't have the money for it right now. Almost the clothing is cheap. Let's go to the item shop up here. See if I can find some women's clothing to give to her. And it makes her friendly to you because you give her a present. And she then will be somebody that you can submit your uh, quests to in the future. And I think it's really useful, especially in the time of when you're doing quests where you complete them in other cities and you want to be able to just continue from where you are without having to sail back. So it's not a bad idea to buy... Um, you know, something for her early on. So, alright, I got it. Just All this needs to stop. Alright, can I buy her 
women's clothing. Now you know when it's women's clothing when it's got the symbol on it that looks like a little person. Um, this is for uh, men, I believe. And, and notice I can't wear women's clothing. That's why it's got a little symbol there. Um, I can't wear this one for whatever reason. Uh, maybe because I'm not in the required skill or something. But this one's women's clothing. So I can't wear any of this stuff. Ooh, I'm going to need that too. Eventually. Eventually. But right now, we're going to get her a petticoat. I cannot equip, as you'll see can't equip because I'm not a female. So we're going to give her that and hope that works. I hope so. Because if it doesn't work, I'm going to feel like I wasted money and then I'm not going to get my money back. At least not nearly enough of it. Let's hope this works. Otherwise, I just wasted time. <laughs> but, you know, if it, if it can do this, it'll save us a lot more time later when we're doing quests and that end up finishing in Seville. Drink with her. Buy her a drink. Then give her a present. Let's give her the petticoat. That was nice. Okay, she liked it. Now let's drink with her again. Nothing. Alright, well, increased our friendship with her. But wasn't enough to, to give her the ability to submit our quests so we'll just have to go to Sager's um, and it's not a huge deal I need to go back there anyways to get a new skill but alright so now we have some um, some things to report discoveries we have a port settlement uh, to submit and treasures to submit for um, I know that ports are best submitted in the in, the, in major cities, and not all major cities, but I know it's, uh, I believe it's Duke Farness that I go to. They've got several people to pick here. El Greco, Tom Pires, and Duke Farness. I'm going to go to Duke Farness um, because I think he's the guy that I should submit these uh, quests to. So I click this board over here to teleport over there faster, and then I'm going to walk to Duke Farness. Now, if you're unsure about who do you need to go see to submit these report uh, these ports to or any of these discoveries like I have another discovery to report um, you go to you just type in into Google you you know Uncharted Waters Online reporting discoveries list and it'll show you who to go to to report these discoveries to um, I know for a fact that Duke Farness is one of them when it comes to ports but the other discovery that I have which I believe is a treasure gets reported to someone else to get the quest mediation permit and more adventure skill. So we're going to go to Duke Furness. Okay. And then we're going to say report. We're going to report our port settlements. And then say hmm, which ones do we want to report. Wow, it doesn't let me report Seville. Alright, whatever. Support Lisbon. Boom. 32 adventure fame. Quest mediation permit. So this is why you come here. So you can get the QMPs, as they're called. Sagers, I'm gonna do the same thing. We got advent 80 adventure fame for that. Oh, look at that! My social ability school's gone up because I'm talking to somebody with higher level um, social factor and Pharaoh as well. Boom! 22 adventure fame. Got another QMP. Now I could submit this to him just to see if I get a QMP or not. I'm willing to take that risk just to show you that I don't get a QMP. Maybe. So let's go to him. Click treasure. And it says for a quest, a team card. Oh, he won't even accept the discovery. Interesting. So, I guess because I need it for a quest and I haven't handed the quest in yet. Gotcha. All right, whatever. But good to know that if you make the mistake, uh, they won't accept it. Good, good to know. All right, so we've pretty much done everything we can here right now. Um, so now let's go back to the port. Wondering if we could. Wondering if we could do. Buy anything from here. I don't know what sells well in Lisbon or in Sagers. <laughs> That's the thing. I know what sells well in Seville. I don't know what sells well in 
other cities because I don't go to them very often. Okay, so, so here's some story. So there's a lot of stories in this game, a lot of events that you can go through. Um, there's, I believe, this story, which I think is the Lost Memory story. Then there's also the actual Spain story. Then there's, you know, you can participate in the mall. They'll kind of walk you through where you need to go in each place because they say, please meet me here, please meet me there. You know, and then you just go to these places and then these little pop-ups will happen every so often. They don't result in necessarily anything all that important. Um, they just move the story along. Um, they don't necessarily result in items that are amazing. Sometimes you do. Like at the end of one, I got like a rosary from a woman named Elena, and it has like bonuses to a few things, which are good. Don't get me wrong, but if you're not particularly looking for those bonuses, it's not a big deal. And not everybody wants those items either, so you can't just sell them either sometimes. So it, it, it can be and it cannot be worth your while. I'm going to ignore them for now. If you want to know how to do them, I would suggest going to Ivy Row or the wiki fan page they will have the information you need in order to uh, truly uh, you know know what you're doing and, and get those done but we're gonna ignore them for now so anyways we're gonna add some more uh, provisions and we're gonna set sail we're gonna go right to Sager's oh it's gonna tell me he bought me fishing bait Good to know because I actually want fish because I know I could sell them in uh, Seville. So let's go fishing. I use the item, and you see the little fish symbol means that I'm fishing. Now, when you catch fish, you catch a fish that's not a fish. Fish it doesn't say fish. It says what kind of fish it is. You need to convert that fish to the tradable good of fish to sell it at a higher price. Occasionally you'll fail at uh, fishing because I don't have a high f fishing skill or something. But anyways, so yeah, I, I do want to f catch a lot of fish, but they're they're going to turn into a certain kind of trade good that isn't sellable as well as the real fish item to Seville, and that's where I need the fisherman's preservation uh, skill book in order to do the recipes to change them over. Um, so I'm not. If I do get fish from fishing in this trip, which so far the fishing line has snapped twice, if I do get fishing fish from this, I'm going to hold on to them until I get the fishing skill book to convert them over to fish um, that I could sell in Seville. I just need the money for that, and I want to buy a few skill books uh, with the money I do have. So I'm going to stop in Sager's and I'm going to buy that cookbook uh, group so I can make vigor food, uh, which is important. Oh, speaking of skills, I forgot to use my skills. Not super important, but by the way, if you want to know how to chat in world here, I notice I clicked this and switched it over to world earlier, but nobody's showing up here. Uh, I think I need to change world chat settings from chat off to all. And now I will have chat logs popping up here uh, from people talking. So I can say hello. Making a new let's play. It's me, Chuck Thunder. Not that anyone wants to respond, but if someone does, they could. Say hello, you're getting recorded. Hi, Roland. He's a CA. Roland is a community advisor. He makes sure that people are following community guidelines. Hi, hot stepmom. Okay. Anyways, we're going to go to the harbor. And now that we're in Sagers. And I'm going to buy that book while I... Oh, first let me hand in the quest. Once we hand in that quest, we will get some money likely. Click him and boom, you immediately submit. Oh good, I got 10,000 ducats. Finish the quest. 
and 180 trust uh, quest fame and I got a challenge mission. Oh, I got landmark ribbons. So, see, this is what I mean. Like doing this is going to get you a lot of, a lot of skill, a lot of items, a lot of important skills. So now I have landmark ribbons, I believe, somewhere. Let's check my inventory. Landmark ribbons are used for when you're on land and you want to return back to the main opening, kind of like a Pokemon escape rope. It brings you back to the beginning of the cave. So now that I have the items, I finished a challenge mission too. It looks like. Yep. Uh, complete a quest from a guild, and they give me some a quest mediation permit. So sure, sure, we're going to take that since we already have some. Boom. People in chat say the worst things sometimes. Someone says they have a lot of subs now. Fifteen subs. Give me some more. Or feel free to subscribe. Look at that. So anyways, we are now in a moment of uh, finishing that quest. Now we could get another quest. We might as well. We're here, right? You know, make make your your traveling useful and get as many quests as you travel back and forth. So we have communication to Lisbon, communication to Seville. Doesn't really matter, it just required different things. So maybe we can accept both quests. Yep. So we're going to go to Lisbon and Seville. So, like I said, try to grab as many quests as possible. It's it's good to have, um, you know, as many. I think you're going to get two at a time, so. Save some money. Alright, now we are going to buy those books I was talking about from the shopkeeper. We are going to buy the Lifestop Secrets and we are going to buy Simple Recipes because it's the starting point for a lot of oh and the Fisherman's Arts Preservation so we're going to buy both of these. It's exactly what I need to get started. Now did we get any fish when we were fishing? No, that's how poor fishermen we are. <laughs> All right, um, so yeah, <laughs> completely. Uh, completely uneventful uh, start here. Let's see what else we got. No, they don't, you can't. You can change jobs here. No, endorsements. But yeah, no. Um, What do, yeah, no fish here, so we're just gonna we're gonna continue on and go right on to finishing these quests. So again, this will probably be the last ones I do here. I'm gonna do these quests. They said talk to somebody in Lisbon and in Seville, so let's go ahead and since we're doing this, we'll buy some fish while we're here. Oop, I can't buy that much fish. Well, I'll show you how to do pigs then while I'm at it. Buy some pigs, okay? And we will get on our sailing. Uh, trip here to Lisbon because the quest says to go to Lisbon and talk to the Adventure Guild in Port in Lisbon. So let's go there. Set sail and head to Lisbon. Now I'm going to show you how to make use these books. I hit use items and I have these recipe books here now available to me. I'm going to click the Livestock Secret Pigs since I just bought some pigs. Click OK. And here is going to show you the recipes that I could use to make uh, recipes with the pigs. Now, oh, I totally forgot that making turning pigs to pork requires cooking level 3. And I do not have cooking level 3. So I can't do that. Poop. Well, that's OK. Lesson learned. But what you can do is I can use the other book when I have the right items which is simple recipes starts at level one I can turn wheat into flour and so that's what I'm gonna focus on doing I'm gonna stop in and to Sagers and I'm gonna buy some flour to do that again but that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do that till I hit level three I'll show that in the next video I think starting skills in the next video will be a good starting point 
and showing you how to use that to make money as well as also grinding your skill levels up so that you become more and more proficient and making the right um, uh, foods that you need for vigor. That way you're not reliant on buying it from people. So I make a little bit of profit, 100 profit for selling the pigs, whatever. I mean, they don't have anything here that I could cook with, so. Anyways, so let's go talk to the uh, Adventure Guild. moderator no that's not what the quest said to do see this is why it says it's important to read oh to the portland lizard I read this adventure guild so you read the quest over make sure you're reading it right it says a letter from the adventure guild to the port in Lisbon so that means I need to actually talk to the port guy which I would have realized after I tried to leave so good, good lesson learned here you do this a lot in the game go to the wrong people Go to any port mediator or port guide and click. No? What the heck? I am in Lisbon. Well, if you don't know, you go to Quest Hint and it'll tell you. Lisbon's port official. Ah, uh, you know why? Because he's not the port official, he is just a port guide. Aha. Uh -huh port official is the very specific port guy. I see. Yeah, lesson learned too. Didn't realize it couldn't just be anybody. Yeah, there we go. Quest completed. Perfect. Now we can go back to Sagers. Good to know. Again, things you learn as you play. And you may not realize these things until it's too late. You know, like, if no one had told me that I need to be in the adventure skill when handing when doing discoveries and handing in discoveries, I would have wasted a lot of experience not getting the right stuff. So it's important that I do that sort of stuff now to show you guys how to really benefit. Um, otherwise you're just wasting, you know, opportunity. I think we may stop here right after we uh hand in this quest in Seville, because, I mean in Seville and, and Sagers, because the next quest that I have is to go to Seville and pretty much do the same, talk, talk to the port official in Seville. And you're going to keep doing that until um, the exam quests become available to you, and that they come available to you as you get uh, adventure skill and adventure fame. So, when they do arrive, we will... Uh, we will cap those and we will understand how, and how to complete them because again something that nobody taught me how to do I figured out on my own let's go to the harbor again and we're gonna go right to our adventure mediator and hit in the quest done 5,000 Adventure experience and a QMP. Again, why this is why we take these quests. You won't give me any more quests because I already have a quest. So I guess they really want me to finish that quest first. All right. So then, with that being said, let's buy some wheat while we're here because it's something we know I can do. Go buy wheat. Hmm. Good to know. So I don't have a lot of storage. So I bought this much wheat, and I'm not going to be able to convert it over to flour easily. So, because I don't have the space to convert it, so let's just buy like a little bit. Instead of buying 30, we'll go to buy specified quantity, and we'll buy 10. Okay, and I'll hit OK, and then we'll use my item to convert it. In simple recipes, to mill it. To and well, here you can do it one by one, or you can choose the amount we want to do. I'm going to say do it all, so I'll hit max. I think it's all I have the vigor for. That's why it's saying 6, even though I know I bought 10. And I'll do it. Boom. And I got 12 flour. So I'm going to go ahead and sell that flour. Make a profit. And 
Hmm. I'm out of vigor, so let's get some more vigor. Fill up my vigor and do the same thing with the weed again. So if, notice how this uh, text below here it turned yellow, which means he's directly messaging me. Blue means that it's, you know, in some other sort of group chat. Yellow is direct. So if you want to respond to him, click world, go to tell, and then click the little arrow, and then click the name of the person that pops up. He's the most recent person you talk to, and I will thank him for it. Thanks for finding me. Be sure to subscribe and like. I'll be posting this shortly and you will be featured. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe that's what I'll do every day in any of these games. Whenever I do Let's Play, I'll call somebody out who's a subscriber. I, again, I don't know who they are in game, but we'll definitely call out Good Buddha for giving me this, hopefully giving me a subscribe and a like and watching my videos because it'd be wonderful that people do that. It'll help me out a lot as well as also help anybody who's really, and that's my the reason why I'm doing this, not for me, but to help all the people who are new at this game. Completely new. Because that, that is my issue, is that new people are turned away from this game so quickly. And that's why I'm doing this for you guys, you know? It's one of those games which that if you're not a uh, if you don't have the right kind of help as you go, you will get discouraged and you will not know what to do. So, just learning the lessons and teaching it to you early on. So, all right, anyway, so I'm just continuing to convert my flower. Notice some of the flowers are, are great successes and they give you more. It's not like an exact 10 to 10 ratio. And that's a good thing. It means I'm making some money uh, if the value isn't as high as you'd like. But I think I seem to be making some money. I'm buying the wheat for 46 and selling the flour for 50, so I'm making 10 ducats per. So that's that's like not bad. So here we are again, converting the flour. Oh, I'm out of vigor again. This is the early game, not having a lot of vigor. It's a big deal. Constantly spending money on it, and on here I am spending. It's only two ducats, so it's not like I'm spending a lot of money. But oop, I'm drunk. Can't drink liquor anymore. Oh well. Simple recipes again, milling process, mill them up. And while I'm here, I'm also going to refresh my can of alcohol. That's why they make me force to use milk. Thank God there's an option. And we'll go ahead and sell our last of our flour. And boom. We made a little bit of profit and we increased our skill in cooking. A little bit. We're at 128 or 200, so I'm trying to get to level three so I can start doing pig stuff because that's where the money's at. It's literally where the money is all going to be. So I think in the next video, that's exactly what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to buy some fish and bring that over. Um, I think in the next video, I'm going to show you how to continue to do cooking and continue to do questing, and we're going to just continue to see how this process uh, works for us. It's going to be a bit of a bit of a grind and that's what this game is all about is literally grinding as much as we can uh, to get ourselves up to those levels that we really want. So without further ado guys I'm going to end it here and we're going to go see you in the next video. Take care.